Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and with me is, of course, Ranger. Ranger, how you doing? I'm fantastic, as always. How are you doing? I'm pretty good, and I just want to welcome everyone to our newest show. This would be LCS Weekly, where we talk about LCS stuff, all types of things. So, um, this is the inaugural first edition. Um, probably going to be a little bit sloppier than future ones come, because, hey, we're just going at this. And please, if you have any ideas, put them. I'm gonna I'm gonna read every comment. So if you have better names, better ideas, let us know. True, that is very so. true. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and jump on into when we do these uh, LCS weeklies is the news. And I think big news this week, at least off the top for week two coming up, is that Zion, Spartan, Impact, Piglet, Avalon, and Helios will all be playing this week on their respective the respective teams. Piglet is here. Piglet is in <laughs> fact here. He has the hand. Yes, so we're excited about that. That's our first big news that at least that I have. And like you said, Piglet's a big one. Um, I think, I, I know a lot of people, uh, there's two other ones, that, or actually three of the other ones I'm interested in. Helios, he wasn't a huge performer last season, but I think he's going to be important to the team because he's played with the team. I think that's one that just kind of they need because he's not a sub. The second one being Impact, former SKT World Champion as well, along with Piglet, same team. Um, now, communication on Team Impulse is going to be still weird, but he's at least a really solid top laner. So that's just another one to watch. And then the other one is Zion Spartan. Not the greatest top laner, but not a bad top laner. And I really think CLG will be happy to have him. Yeah, and he's he, they sniped him. like Majorly. Like, it's, it's nice that um, I, I like Zion Spartan just because he, he played like the Riven. Yeah. Um, and he's all aggressive and he plays those like, just let Zion Spartan do Zion Spartan's thing. I really like the player, but I'm glad he's back. Yeah. Um, what is he, 19 now? 18 still? He's still young. Still he's young. He's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to pick him up and shake him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the news I wanted to talk about was Rush. Um, Rush came out with an article saying that he chose America, not money. Um, Interesting. He likes it here. Actually, that's another thing I will say that uh, other Korean players have said. Um quality of life as in their schedules are way more tolerable yeah because they don't like stick you in a small room say you have to practice 14 hours a day or whatever the koreans do which is ridiculous and that's on and the and both na and eu are kind of ramping up how much practicing is happening anyways but in comparison to what they were used to it's it's still way below what you know they've been doing so i think right there is one thing that's easier for them on their lives so um do you, do you honestly think that that is a direct correlation the amount of practice to how good they are yeah i, I think mean, i think part of it is there but think about it this way i totally understand that lots of practice and something will get you really far but if you went to work for 16 hours a day and then only had x amount of time off and you did do that six to seven days a week I don't think you'd actually perform as well at your job because you need actual yeah. time to recuperate. Now, recuperate in a, in a physical mentality is different too to a men, uh, like just a mental mentality of recuperating there. So I think it's interesting to think that, you know, like, yes, physically you have off days in sports because you need to your, let your body heal. I think the same thing can go with your mind too, to a certain degree, with so much practice well, in one thing. You say that, and Cloud9 just moved, right? You, you were telling me about this. They did. Uh, they're, so they're North uh, California. I guess we could throw that into news. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Cloud okay. Cloud so, Nine has moved. <laughs> so you have a team flying in every week. Yes. That automatically cuts down on pleasure and work and play. We, we talked for like 20 minutes about this, about how it just like literally takes away from any focusing you can have when you have to worry about a plane, packing, uh, trip, food, all this stuff is additional. I mean, what's the benefit of moving away? Yeah, it, it's just downtime from the game, but how much do you need of the game? So can they balance it correctly? And as week one has shown... Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. We shall see, though. Maybe it was a fluke. Yeah, it's, it's a huge change um, to all that kind of stuff. Like, it's just like, oh, hey, we're used to driving, you know, an hour, maybe two hours to the thing. Now we have to plan 10 hours in advance. Yeah, so just to catch everybody up, if you weren't sure about what we're saying by they moved, um, Cloud9 moved to North California, which, granted, isn't the furthest away. And I don't know where in North California, but I believe they are now flying into each LCS weekend. And so if we look at it this way, an LCS weekend for them is Saturdays and Sundays, meaning they have to be there. 
you're not going to fly in that morning because that doesn't work, and you probably can't fly out in the evening on Sunday because games can go late. You can't really book a flight for 8 p.m. if your match gets delayed at 8 p.m. Doesn't work. So I'm assuming they fly home Monday mornings, and I'm assuming they fly there on Friday evenings. That's four days of your week, meaning you have three days left for practice. So I don't know if they're practicing the second they get back and they're practicing all the way up till their plane leaves, but even then you're cutting things close and you can't really do too much strategy on a plane because let's face it, you're on a plane. So I don't know how this downtime will affect them, whether or not this is the only downtime they get outside the game or just how that's all working. And I could be wrong on how the schedule works, but that's how I'm reading into what they've said. That killed Gambit, uh, Moscow 5, Gambit Gaming Night. So if you guys don't know, a lot of Americans don't. Germany still has laws against Russians because I don't know if you guys know anything about World War II. Russia might have invaded the country and stayed there a little too long, built a wall. Stuff happened. Anyways, so they can only stay in Russia for a certain amount of time, or um, Germany for a certain amount of time. So Gambit had to fly back and forth every week. We're talking 12 to 14 hour flights, and that really mentally takes a toll on you. So Gambit might look disorganized because half their time is spent travel. Yeah, back in the day it was at least. Yeah, and yeah. so they're they've worked on it, but I mean that's travel really hurts teams. Uh, yeah, let's say the NFL teams need the downtime after they practice really hard. You need one day to recuperate. You can be on a plane to recuperate. Doesn't matter. Yeah. In gaming, you have to have that instant connection because this this is two seconds that'll destroy a whole team fight. You lose. About the only thing I can think is they can study film on the way home of the batches they just did while they're traveling, but even yeah. then. I mean, once again, you, you got to utilize three, all your time. There's only three seats, so what is Hyde doing? Hey, Medios, did you see that? Yeah. See that hook? I mean, do they all have their own tablets and they're all watching the same thing? I mean, are they just studying it themselves? So, Or, or is it just reflection time? I don't know. Like I said, it's an interesting it's an interesting aspect of what's happening. Maybe that's part of the reason we're seeing that first week just be sloppy. Um, we can get into that, too, in a little bit more so about what we thought happened. So um, the, other, the next thing, unless you have any more news to go over... All right, well, let's jump in then to last week's game. So week one and talk about um, the games, our thoughts, and what happened score-wise. So um, is there any specific EU match you have in mind that you want to talk about? Uh, you got to talk about Fnatic versus Elements, just because it's number one versus number two. Yeah. Uh, Fnatic has – they lost players. Lots of players. Lots of players. And one of them happens to be on Elements. Uh, <laughs> Very true. Which is just funny that you switch to a team that you project to be better. Maybe it was other reasons. I don't know. But he left the team, and then he loses to the team day one. It's just kind of, it stings. It hurts. Yeah, it does. It's it was a it was a good game. I thought, uh, especially for Fnatic, yeah. obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, and that was the way to that was a great way to actually kick off just the LCS kicking off in general. I mean, elements Fnatic game one, day one. That's a, like you said, big things happening. Fnatic, four new players, one returner. I mean, that's a big change. A lot of people did not pick up these players in their fantasy leagues. I don't think a lot of people expected Fnatic to come out and perform um, how they did. And, I mean, it it went back and forth a tiny bit, but they kind of had it in control, just, you know. Well, Yellowstar was beautiful. He is so good. So good, Yellowstar. And he was a big point to that. So I'm a huge Yellowstar fan, so. Yes, you are. Um, and then the, the only other thing I want to talk about of day one would be Diamond's performance. Uh, huge Diamond fan. I looked at this guy like a prophet uh, season three about all his jungle builds and everything like that. 0-5-0 oh, oh in your first day with, uh, was it Lee Sin? I think it was. I could yes. be wrong. Oh, it was horrendously bad. Like, it wasn't just iffy. It was just awful decisions looked like he had no idea where he was going yeah that's sloppy it's gonna hurt <laughs> it's not what i wanted to see at a diamond no so i mean that that's what stood out to me uh day one yeah what day one i think like you said was elements fanatic i think that was the biggest one obviously fanatic took that game in case you uh, missed that out um and then after that uh giants take a game off of meet your maker the Cape Copenhagen Wolves beat H2K. SK won a game over Rocket. SK looks strong, obviously, week one. They won both of their matches. So Fnatic and SK both at the top, sitting with uh, two wins, no losses. And then rounding out the first day was Gambit gaming over the uni- or under the Unicorns of Love. Gambit didn't perform at all. They lost both their games. So um, at all. same thing on day two, moving into that uh, for, for the EU LCS. 
SK over Meet Your Makers. Once again, that's what made SK, you know, 2-0. They had a pretty easy week, I'd say, but it's, that's good for them. Did not show up to play. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's uh, traditional. Of, that's traditional of that franchise. It's true. Um, what was I going to say? I had something else. Uh, continue. Continuing. So then Back the Giants gaming did take a, a game off of Copenhagen Wolves, and Giants actually finished 2-0 for the week. I forgot to mention that. So Giants also did fine. And then um, Rocket won over Gambit, Fnatic won over H2K, and then Elements finally got their last or their first win on the last game of the day over the Unicorns of Love. But even that was touch and go. Yes, um, Unicorns of Love. I am not a fan. Uh, if, if anyone knows me and plays with me, I am very traditional and strict. You pick these champions, you do this strategy, you win. And Unicorns of Love are like, we're going to pick whatever we want. Yeah. What's a meta? And that, that infuriates me. However, <laughs> they played a great game. Um, best to zero I've seen. I think Unicorns of Love might be my favorite uh, new team to the EU LCS when it comes to new rosters or new names um, for the most part. I think it's because they do these weird comps that throw other teams off is part of the it's reason. So, so true. You don't know how to play against them. Yeah, exactly. And I think that gives them a little bit of a weird upper hand in some cases. I'm not saying they have all the best talent. I don't think they're bad by any means. I think they're all pretty good players. Yeah. I want to see if they can get their teamwork together and maybe strategize their weird picks a little bit with, with uh, certain comps to see if that will actually propel them to more victories in the future. Um, but they're kind of, I mean, they're that weird, like, dark horse team, kind of. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And their name is completely awesome. Oh, yeah, they're ridiculous. They're Unicorns of Love, who takes them seriously? But they are they're five great players. Yes. They just need to get the teamwork uh, synced up. But, again, you gave Frog and Cassidin. Um, that's terrifying. It's scary. As a whole. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I, I think Froggen is one of those players that, if everything goes his way, it's 100% going to win the game. Uh if he gets going, he's going to win. He's going to carry a team, even in LCS standards, and that needs to be on that team who you need to focus on. Yeah, I'm trying to think if last season there was at any point if Froggen didn't carry a game when he was ahead. I think there was only one game I can think of. But other than that, like, yeah, if Froggen gets any kind of lead over his lane opponent, typically can ride that to success. And now with... He doesn't make mistakes yeah. once he's at a lane. I think that's what it is. Well, that now teamed up with the rest of the, the, the members on that team now. I mean, there's multiple sources of carry available. Reckless, uh, or such a good pickup. Reckless, but, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. So, but that was the EU LCS. Anything else you want to expand on from it? I think that pretty much summed it up. Uh, pretty solid games, actually, and surprisingly Great. shorter than the NA matches. Were they? Fun fact. Yes, they were technically shorter. So that's that's never like that. It typically is not. It is typically <laughs> not like that. So for the second beginnings or the first beginnings of the na lcs um week one day one obviously kicking off with another juggernaut match we had tsm versus cloud nine now before we jump into that or anything else uh, anything to talk about from day one that shined off the top of your head you're gonna hit game one so it really doesn't matter um winter fox surprised me tremendously yes um, i'll go with that yeah i'm okay with that i was like oh these guys uh they came they came prepared and ready to just whoop some teams so i was i was i was pleased yeah i mean with a with a really f with their squad being full of uh subs for sure that was i think that's what surprised people they weren't expecting that to happen um i think a lot of people consider gravity to be the um the best challenger team to make it you think so that's what a lot of people are considering um and i see where their argument comes because they do have uh saint as much crap as people give him um, Cop and Bunny, who have all played in the LCS, yeah, you know, so there's there's former LCS experience there. Hey, I okay, here's my thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not hating on Saint or Bunny Fufu. Both of these people make some terrible calls I agree together. That. They if they are the play callers, you are gonna need to someone needs to take over. And I'm not trying to be rude again. Um, they're both better than me. I understand that, but you watch like some of the engages that Bunny Fufu did or steps when he steps up you're like what what was the best case scenario that you were hoping for and i think the same thing when i see saint play so i think what is going on with with those situations is uh what's happening at least in fufu's mind is he has that uh solo queue mentality still a little bit because he hasn't played a lot of lcs so he can step in and make those plays easily in challenger 
um, or more easily in Challenger because teamwork is there, but not in comparison to what LCS teamwork is because you're actually all mic'd together and, and so on. So I think that's a little bit of where Bunny's aggressive side comes from. Saints is probably in a similar vein or he thinks he knows what the right call is and he'll do it, but he might do it like two seconds too late. Kind of a deal. Yeah, it's, yeah. Split and, second uh, hesitation is the killer. It, it's a killer. But yeah, that was, I mean, day one. Day one was good. I, I was impressed. Uh, by a lot of the teams. Yes, so moving back to the first match of the day, which was, of course, Team Solo Mid versus Cloud9. Um, I think people were expecting this to be a closer game than it was, and perhaps for Cloud9 to even <laughs> oh, win the hi. match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, continue. Uh, it, we'll hit him on day two. We'll hit him on day two for sure. Um, and then the next match after that was Dignitas versus Coast. Dig took a game off of Coast. Only because Coast made a massive mistake at the end. They know the mistake they made. Oh. They'll go to correct it. But I think God. what we can bring from this match and from day two is that Coast is actually not a terrible team. No. Great team. Should have had two wins. Uh, yeah. Really screwed the pooch. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. No, that's how, yeah, that's, that's how it's said. Yeah. I think the other thing we can take away, too, and I think this is a mentality I had problem-wise on day, well, both days, really, is we're traditionally used to previous coast that was in the lcs and so you're associating that name with not a good team because the original <laughs> coast a season ago was not very good that can yeah. be said and that's why they got kicked out of the lcs but they have a better roster now it's much stronger and so Jess is great pickup. Jess is great pickup chris um more to talk about on that uh in a minute so uh dignitas get a lucky win or else their week wouldn't be so hot. Winter Fox took that win over Gravity. Um, Team Liquid beat Impulse pretty convincingly. And then Counterlogic Gaming took a game off of Team 8. And then moving into the beginning of Day 2, that had Team Dignitas losing to Impulse. And that uh, made Impulse look a little bit better. Uh, they were working on obviously having a sub in the top lane with not having Impact yet. And uh, they have language barriers majorly on this team because they are uh, English-speaking, Korean-speaking, and Chinese-speaking. So they're yeah, all over the board. Yeah. That's going to be very complicated. Then Coast took a game off of Winter Fox. Uh, way better. Yeah. yeah, very good game by them. Um, and then Liquid over Counter Logic Gaming. We should touch on that one. Yeah, go ahead, touch uh, on that one. So um, <laughs> what we saw is uh, a game that was actually really in control for the first half pretty hardcore by um team liquid a lot of that being down to dominate shot calling i think a lot um and i think he's really stepped into the position really well but during the middle of the game legitimate props to afromu for getting his team plays that they needed and they actually got some kills pushed some towers got some objectives and were able to extend the game to potentially get them back in it um overall it wasn't enough though um great plays by phoenix and by keith during that game, made it just uh, a liquid victory. Yeah. Well, it's a, I mean, you, they they made him pick, or they didn't make him. He picked Blitz, which already tells you that he is putting carry pants on. Mm -hmm. Afro was like, I'm ready to do what you guys need me to do, and I I really think the, the shortcoming was from Xmithy, to be completely honest with you. Um, he yeah. played a really crappy Rengar, um, and if anyone's played Rengar, you don't have mediocre games with Rengar. No. You're not like, I did all right. It's either you couldn't kill anyone or you killed everyone. eight people alive. Yeah. Um, at which, when you pick that with LeBlanc and then Blitz, those are three champions that have to have certain conditions line up. And I don't think they can make them line up. So Afro started doing some really good plays, but his team could line up and take the advantages to win. And on one of those plays where they went to go be aggressive and do so, that was when X Special had a great play himself, knowing he was <laughs> left for dead and he went all in and um, yeah. communicated that correctly with the rest of the team, and it worked out. So, um, uh, <laughs> interested to see how Counter Logic Gaming does because of um, just what they've been doing in the off season and how the last season ended for them, which was not the best to say the least. Um, I'm still interested on why Link is still in the mid lane, but. I know they said he went through. They said he went through all the tryouts and he reclaimed his spot. But I don't care for Link currently. Yeah. Personally. Okay. Well, you're a hater. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> next game, I don't care for high anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Cloud Nine. If you pick major. Oriana, you have to hit an ultimate. It. Yeah. No, there's no words to that. That's how it works. Yeah, I think he hit one, and like a couple questionable, like. 
Yeah. No, that, yeah, I mean, Cloud9 lost to Gravity. I think Gravity had a great comp. I think I don't care for Scion personally. Um, everything's a slow moving skill weird. shot. So, and, yeah. he, and Balls was in the right positions when those engagements came. I know he was split pushing and doing other things, but that doesn't work that way. I mean, like, he's got to be with the team the whole time if, if it's a full engage assassin comp on the other side. So, Cloud9 drops their their uh, their second yeah. loss and their first time they've ever lost two games straight at the start of a season and the first time they've ever been in the last place. Well, I mean, if you watch the game, they could just not catch anyone. Or kill anyone the whole time. Mm -hmm. Just always like I mean, the only one that died was Saint Vicious, and he ultimated in. Yeah. Wait, was this? But that's what Vi wants to do, actually. Yeah, and they kill him. They're like, yeah. We killed and Vi. <laughs> Zed's over here killing someone. You're like, oh, get Zed, and then Cassidy's over here coming. Like, oh, what? we get Cassidy, and oh, we spell shield, and then we're all dead. Yeah, and then Corky comes Valkyrieing in, and then he, because he's a pseudo assassin, and then and then all of a sudden Bunny Foof, or not Bunny Foof, wow, it's special. It flashes in, and he Morgana ults. And you're like, oh, yep. everybody run away in different directions because that's what happens when Morgana ults is everybody runs away from each other. <laughs> and then you're just, and then it's like, oh god, they're just picking us off even easier. So it was really well executed. It was great. It was a great comp. I think Gravity 100% outsmart Cloud9. I don't think they personally outplayed them, but 100% out, outsmarted them. I like how I corrected myself on Bunny Fufu, but it was Bunny Fufu. I don't know why I did that, but whatever. Wait, was it Bunny Fufu? Yeah. Because it's. We're Oh yeah, okay. I, I don't think it was X special. I don't know why I keep going back. It was the same organization. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, that's was what it is. so. It was actually <laughs> funny watching them all over the week talking about how, like, they're just using all the wrong names of all the old team names or just the wrong names. Like a few times they saw a TL for Team Liquid and they'd say uh, TSM. Yeah. Because they saw the T, and yeah, now yeah. there's Team Impulse. So. Yeah, it's funny. So everybody's gonna get confused for all. Now there's Team Eight. There's a lot of T somethings. So yeah, and then and then of team course Dignitas, Maple team Street Cut. is back, and I am not a fan of Maple Street. I yeah, I don't mind him. You know what should have done? I hope I hope High watched the next game between Team Eight and TSM because there were <laughs> some great Slushy ultimates in there from Oriana. Great Oriana play. Um, there was one where they were, uh, by red side, purple sides, blue buff. And then Slushy hit an ultimate, and he kept chasing, and they get in the gate, and he still throws the ball and picks off um, Graves' Wild Turtle. Yeah. And I was like, hi, did, are you watching? He's probably crying in the back, but he should be watching this. Like, yeah. just... It was good. They, they Teammate made a name for themselves. I personally think if I had to pick any of the teams entering from the expansion tournament and or challenger, I think Team 8's the strongest one, personally. Okay, well... Let me ask you this. Yes. Um, we covered our, all the teams, mm -hmm. all the standings. Mm -hmm. Which team do you think overperformed? Overperformed? In EU and NA. Which one was like, you're like, yeah, oh, this guy's a B, but they they were an A. Like, who was the best? Uh, well, biggest surprise. I Can we go with biggest surprise? Yeah, why not? I'm going to the I'm gonna go with the team that's one and one. I'm going to go with Coast. Coast surprised you the most? They did. <laughs> I know. Call me crazy. Because they also have Impaler in the jungle, and he's not terrible. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. They, okay. No, they surprised me the most. I will say that they surprised me the most in a positive light. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you that they were surprising. Okay. Uh, You're going to have a different the, one. That's fine. I, of course I'm going to have a different one. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to be a copycat well, anyways. Yeah. Lame. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to have to say... Fanatic, and the reason why is when you strip an entire organization but keep one player, and then they all just click. We're talking beaten elements, which is a team that was designed to win. The super uh, team, the of super, super team, team. Yeah. yeah, the super team, and then they got the best ADC that I think the foreigners have to offer. The foreigners are EU and NA. Koreans are always home team. Something you'll learn about esports. Um, which is almost now China, but that's a different yeah. <laughs> conversation. But they, they stacked this super team and then Fnatic didn't even have a problem with it no I they never, didn't they weren't sweating they were just like no no we got him we got him countered lane was great i mean yellow star is a great player again but that was who i thought i think that. i think part of the reason why i don't pick that as much is i think they actually had some terrible drafting okay. again like i think i think Fnatic drafted really well and i think partial part of that goes to their coach and i think they drafted well against that so i think that's I part like of the coach the coach implement yes very smart Everybody was talking up how coaches with experience, uh, Loco Doku and uh, Cloud Nine's coach, were gonna outperform the others, and that's uh, zero and two team and a one and one team. So yeah, 
Yeah. Um, I don't like Lulu from Froggen, so yeah, I think that do with the Fnatic game. I think I think Lulu is not a, a good mid pick right now. And they banned the crap out of what Ferb, uh, Febben, 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 who was like, all right, I'll go to my fourth or fifth pick, still gonna dominate, still which good. I love. See, I, I love. Anyway, I just wasn't expecting it, and I loved it. So, and then for my underachieving team, it's high, not even Cloud Nine. High, I'm picking on high. Okay. Ugh. It was such a lackluster performance. Like, I could have thrown a ball into the crowd and be like, whoever caught that, come play mid, and they would have done better than high. Like, I'm sorry. It was just depressing to watch. The trades were not in his favor. The roams were crappy. Nothing. Not yeah, one, not... yeah, that's true. Because he did the fizz into Bjergsen's Ari, and he was afraid the whole time because Rek'Sai is a possible presence, and he got majorly destroyed and i mean um bjergsen went on him uh, under turret in a 1v1 and came out with his life i mean like you shouldn't die 1v1 under your tower and lane and you, you shouldn't in the lcs that shouldn't happen um i don't want to pick on just high though i think it should never so. die under their tower let alone his tower like come on yeah it's Pogo. yeah it's tough but I think, um, the, besides, I don't want to just pick on high. I think Medios is going to have a very interesting uh, last rest of the split. Um, his jungle pool that I'm aware of currently, um, all his champions aren't really meta right now, and I think that could cause more problems in the future. I could be wrong. I want to see. I want to see if they rebound really well this week. I think. I think Cloud Nine's not a bad team or by any means, but um, I just. I just. They scare me. Nothing looked strong, and it, like even glimmers of hope. Like their their rotations weren't terrible, and they did take those dragons in that one bear and that one team, and that was good. But they rotated to just some objectives that the other team was willing to give up. Yeah, it's hundred percent. Not even like it's fine. So there, I don't know. It's interesting. I want to see where it goes. Okay. Um, players to pick up. I, I think we can cover completely on. If you had no players from SK or Fnatic, you should have scooped those up already. Yeah, scoop a few of those up. I highly suggest uh, that. And from NA, I think, uh, who, who was it that I was really thinking the, that you should pick up? Mine um, mine was Chris. Chris Chris performed really well. Chris is um, Chris on Coast, top laner. Very good. That would be an excellent pickup. I actually have. Oh, Slushy. Oh, Slushy, yeah, maybe. I think he's going to lead teammate. With that performance of Oriana, uh, to be able to position yourself with Oriana and to properly throw your balls, I think it's really important, uh, and it shows that he will lead his team to success. Yeah, I I, I can get behind that one. And let's face it, he went up against uh, Bjergsen. Yes, came out on top. No easy task. Bjergsen is. He's one of the best. So, and he's he's really aggressive in lane, yeah. and he. He wins by pushing people out of his way. Like, he doesn't outthink someone or go around him. He, if you're in the way, he's going to kill you to yeah. his objective. Like, it's yeah. going to happen. So, great, great job overall on Slushy. I bet he was scared. I, I'm not going to lie. I bet he was really nervous. Oh, I get to go against Bjergsen Week off a one. win. Yeah. Got it. Got, got it. <laughs> um. I'm going to do it, guys. Um, another one, and I hate to tote, and they just had good weeks for sure. That's part of it. Um, and Impaler also had a really good week in general overall. I'm not sold on Impaler. I'm not 100% yet Great sold job. on him, but I think he's decent. And I think what is going to happen on Coast is they're going to use his ganking abilities early to propel ahead the solo lanes. That's where the power in that team is at. It's in the solo and lanes. When you pick up teams for fantasy or, or pick up players or drop players, it's not personally who you think is best. It should be who you think the teams will evolve around to get you the points. It's part um, of it, yeah. If you guys ever remember Man Cloud, he got his mid camped every game, and so many points were gained. Uh, it wasn't relevant then, but mm -hmm. it was just he always had that KDA because the same things are kind of going to happen with like Impaler and stuff. He's going to be the early game uh, decision. So I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, um, it's going to get you points, although. Once again, who knows what could happen each week? I don't think anybody would have expected, yeah. you know, Cloud Nine players to perform the way they did this week. <laughs> Another one yeah. I want to throw actually under the bus quick that we didn't mention is if you have crumbs, don't play crumbs. No, that was my next. I was about to say, just drop him, yes. drop him so hard. God, <sighs> so underwhelming. 
just the decision making. Oh, and when he got that dragon stolen from him, I'm like, he just left it there. He let the opponent walk up and, swing. and take his dragon um, from Impulse? Uh, I think it was. Uh, well, yeah, it was, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, anyway, he just walks right up and is like, yeah, this is mine now. And he was okay with it. D like, he, <laughs> Dibs! <laughs> yeah, this, Rush just is like, this is mine. I would like it. And he was like, oh, wait, I wounded it for you. Just go ahead. Yep. Like, was not impressed. Um, not impressed. Yeah, I think that's... I'm trying to think. Are there any other picks that you would have for people to definitely pick up? I think, I mean, anybody on Liquid's probably a fair call. Yeah. Um, I think their whole team is well-rounded is why. Yeah. I Liquid's think it's really... Just well-rounded team. Obviously, yeah. if you can get a hold of Piglet, I don't know how it's going to go, but we can only hope that for the best. I have him and in both of my leagues. My Europe drop <laughs> is an IQ. He makes the worst decisions known to man. I don't know why. He does what he does. But he does what but he does. But he does it, mm -hmm. and he's proud of it. And he's made a name on it of being able, like, yeah, I can fill these shoes and do this stuff on Gambit. And really, it's just him and Diamond running around dying. Yeah, I I think you pretty much drop anybody if you have a Gambit player. <laughs> I think Gambit's the weakest in EU. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't want it to be that way, but it it is that way. I used to love Moscow 5 and old Gambit and Oh, yeah. God, they were great players, but something's just happened over the last couple splits well, okay. and just over Meet time. Meet your makers Oof. or Moscow or uh, Gambit gave you. Right. Oh god, don't no, I don't <laughs> want either of these things in my life. <laughs> I don't want either of these teams anywhere near me. I might catch it. Uh, <laughs> I don't want this. Yeah, that's true. It, it just, it hurts. Uh, yeah, a huge Gambit fan. I loved watching uh, Alex Itch, who, yeah. maybe we should cover this in the news. His challenger team is kicked out, too. Oh, yeah? He done. He, he gone. Done. I liked like, Alex. It, he was good. He was really good and just made some terrible life decisions. That's um, true. But he has a kid and a wife. Maybe he's focusing on that because we all know he's not focusing on League. <laughs> so. That's true as well. If he's focusing on his family and his kid, that's I'm okay with that though. Yeah, we'll, we'll back you up because you're not playing against or you're not doing well in League. And his yeah. team also got banned last year. Um, just a last one in case. Uh, did we mention Wicked? Uh uh. Had a terrible week. Yeah. I, I know they won a match, but he legitimately had a terrible week. Um, yes, Wicked frog. went like. 2, 4, and 13 or something. like Over the week? Yeah. It wasn't impressive. Yeah, it's... The, mm, womp womp, I believe is a proper term. <laughs> just He just kind of pooped in his lane and was like, here. And they help. even gave him a champion that was his favorite carry champion. I really... Uh, yeah, and so I'm interested to see it once again, he, if he's a rebound. But he, I mean, if you have him, I wouldn't ditch him yet, but give him another week. If he doesn't perform, I would I would consider someone new. See who starts okay. to stand out and see if anybody in your league has uh, grabbed um, any of those other picks that we talked about. The J4 NAR combo. Yes. Shoot. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about what we saw a little bit in meta shifts or meta changes or uh, just meta things. So, yes, the the Narvin combo. So, NAR and Jarvin on a team, I believe, has yet to lose a match. Pretty strong. It's super strong. Uh, J4, if anyone knows. Uh, his other name. When you're cool with him, it's what you go by. Yeah. Uh, he is not the tankiest or the most damage dealing. Depending on what you build, that's how he goes. Yes. So if you build a little bit towards damage, you're really squishy to get popped. Yes. Nar can build tanky and still do some pretty significant damage. So you put those two together. You have one person that jumps in and stuns, one person that jumps in and chucks. And it's a lot of commotion, I want to say. Mm -hmm. In a small amount of area, and J4, again, doesn't have to solo tank. You have a tanky top lane that can help. Also, they both do damage together. They work really well together. I they, they do. I was not aware yeah. of this. Well, so, the other reason that really helps them brawl together well in a team fight is because their ultimates combo together. Um, that is actual terrain when Jarvan uses Cataclysm, and Nar can stun kick people into it. And that counts. So whether they're in it or out of it, or wherever it happens, and there's walls around... 
<laughs> they're probably gonna get stunned, and that's gonna be extra damage, more slows, more, I mean, you know, more stun. That's more duration of you to kill them. So um, it just works really well together. I want to see either one of them banned or picked from the enemy team so it can't happen. And I don't think it's just a guaranteed win combo, but I personally believe that Gnar right now, because of his dueling potential, has just an advantage in top, obviously. Um, and he gets just too, too tanky in his uh, big form. The problem is, though, if he's not in big form for a fight, then he's not too much of a problem. So there is that thing you have to gamble. But I currently believe easily top three jungler is J4. And I honestly think I'm putting him at number one right now for the strongest jungler in the really? game. Really? Personally. Yeah. Okay. I've been playing him a lot recently, or more so. It's it's just stupid right now, personally. He he does enough early damage. You just build a tiny bit, and then you transition it into your tank, and you 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 rocked you enough of the, the first tankiness. half of the game. Yeah, you ignore you you did so much of the first half of the game that then your tankiness is enough for the late half of the game, and you just carry. All right. Well, I'm I'm still gonna put Lisa to stop. I think uh, a Lisa that that's properly played is the most terrifying thing ever. However, we didn't see one. Before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> True. <laughs> um, meta shifts. Uh, was oh no okay. Camping top lanes, um, like I want to say, ninety percent of the pressure was put top lane in the beginning. It was so much. You are fine. Uh, there is so much pressure in uh, that they did on the top lane, and that brings up Nar. Nar is really hard to kill. Has a slow. Mm -hmm. Has an escape. It's tanky. Grows to a giant. I mean, these are all these things that make it so you can't really gank Nar effectively. Yeah, but he can bring so much pressure to the top lane. I mean, who who out bullies uh, Nar? Was it Cass? Like I think Cass. Was Cass did out bully Nar for a little bit. Yeah, but it what but did? Cass just got a nerf because of partially that lane presence was too strong. Um, but yeah, it's it's these it was it was minor, but Nar is just so good top lane right now. It's because he's ranged, um, and then when he wants to be in your face, he's bigger and has more health, and then he's got stuns and slows for days. So he just works well, and like one v one wise, he works incredibly well. Uh, now, you, I will say though, real quick, you oh. said a lot of the pressure was in top lane. There was a lot spent on mid lane though, and with roams coming up from the bottom, and then uh, junglers going all in, lots of flashes being burned for staying safe and picking up kills. So there was a lot of pressure also on mid. I think overall, we didn't see really any pressure in bot. Not a lot. That's true. Just Which makes me fear Piglet more, but it's fine. Yes. Another day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Camp Piglet. Um, <laughs> Okay, so triple kill. <laughs> now Aunt Badger knows this. I just despise Zerath. I think Zerath might be the strongest mid laner right now, and I'm saying this because you don't have to worry about dragons anymore. Your team will not lose because they got two dragons up on you in the gold shift, mm -hmm. and Zerath really struggled having to position himself correctly on purple side. He's like, oh, I need to get in position for dragon, but then I can get. You know something can happen to my butt side uh so you have to rotate it was really weird now you can just give that up and be like push the tower over it's fine in mid we actually gain an advantage yeah so it makes zara terrifying same with cassidy uh i don't yeah. think cassidy counters zara but i think that they <laughs> both do really well when you don't have to worry about objectives as much Just yeah no yeah i agree i completely agree yeah. i've you know i've been playing Zerath a lot i mean i play him a decent amount i i think he's a great pocket pick the other thing too is when you can't rely on your team but you see you have a good amount of front line you just use your front line to tank it all as you sit in the back and you do all your damage so he's a good pickup and oriana oriana oh, so good. Uh, yeah can be <laughs> oh that was a high blow <laughs> wow that was bad so bad. Thanks, freak. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, that was our uh, meta shift section yeah. of things. So see Braves. what see what was happening, Braves. what was working. Graves, what do you think about Graves? Not convinced still yet on it. Um, that's just me. I like Graves, and I liked Graves, but the problem is I like Graves, and I liked Graves. Late liked, I like him still, and I liked him more previously. But I don't see him working amazing in late game. Is he sacrifices range? too much. Yeah. yeah. But it's tough. Janna, I think Janna makes it possible. I think Janna could make it possible, but once again, you gotta peel it just right. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. You missed that tornado. He at least has mediocre open. escape too. He can at least. He has a mediocre. It's a great escape. Well, I mean, in comparison to like a Valkyrie, it's not quite as good as that. But you know. But that's why Valkyrie uh, okay. got nerfed, so it makes sense. But yeah, I think Graves is fine. 
you just okay. really need to utilize your early game defense because of your passive and the damage that you have. Um, I think he does team up really well with Leona, but other than that... Oh, well, that's lane presence. That just smoke bomb Q, add an extra 100 damage to it, and Leona stun, you're just dead. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good combo. Do it. Yeah. Rock it. Make it work. <laughs> All but, right, so that was... What, meta shifts? We're that's good? meta shifts. All right. Or at least things that are working. Or, you know. Next week. Next okay. week, matches and predictions. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just talk real quick about next week's matches. Let's start with the EU LCS. So on can day I, can, one. What? Can I start with just, I, I want to predict first. Oh, um, I was going to go through the game first. You're just going to win. Nope. Go ahead. Okay. Good call. One of them's going to get a win. One of them's going to get a win. Um, but overall, so starting off on day one, H2K versus Meet Your Maker. And then the Unicorns of Love take on the Giants Gaming. And then, of course, Fnatic and Rocket. And then SK versus Gambit. And then Elements versus the Copenhagen Wolves. So, yes. And then the second day consists of Gambit Gaming versus Fnatic. Giants and H2K. Elements versus Rocket. SK versus Unicorns of Love. And Meet Your Maker against the Copenhagen Wolves, which should be a slugfest for the bad teams. So, any predictions for what you think you might see next week? Did you cover both days? For the EU, yes. Oh, you did? Yeah, okay. at least right. the match is coming up. You're fine. I was being distracted. Um, SK Gaming. Okay. Really easy lineup. Yeah. Uh, I expect them to be 4-0. Okay. No, no doubts in my mind. Uh, Fnatic, same thing. So we should have two 4-0 teams, mm -hmm. is what I'm predicting. Um, I'm really hoping Elements becomes 3-1, but I do believe <sighs> that Wolves can take a game off them right now. Yeah, I think they. I think they'll have one game that might be tough. Yeah, uh, I'm not still so on Rock Hat, but yeah, I'm not either. I I do think um, Fnatic should be able to also um, go 4-0. That's what I said. SK F and Fnatic. Fnatic and SK. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm also agreeing. Oh. That oh. Both of them can do that, and Elements could end up uh, three and two. Who knows? Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll win. Okay. Or right. yeah. Yeah. Or two and two. Sorry. Not three and two. That's too many games. They can't physically play that many. It's not available. So that's my predictions. Okay. Now, moving For things. NA. Yeah, moving over to the NA LCS. We have Gravity taking on Dignitas, and then Team Eight taking on Coast. Cloud Nine taking on Team Liquid. Team Impulse versus Counter Logic Gaming, and then TSM versus a Winter Fox for day one. Day two moves on with Counter Logic Gaming taking on Cloud Nine. Team Dignitas against Winter Fox. TSM against Team Liquid. Team Impulse versus Team Eight, and Team Coast versus Gravity. Yeah. Okay. First game, I think it's really I, I, this game should be awesome. Dignitas versus Gravity. Um, I expect to gra or, uh, get Gravity to win. Yep. I know I talked a bunch of crap about Gravity, but I don't think they're worse than Dignitas. <laughs> um, I agree. I, I am praying that High and Media show up. I would hate to see them fall to an 0-3. Uh, but, but they I don't have an it. easy start. No, I, I think Liquid's going to put, put it in their face. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is Piglet's first game, too, against Cloud9, who Pig should oh, be good. He is so excited. He is so excited to show the world, and cloud Nine saving grace was sneaky. Yes. So he will it be sneaky? Up. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's ready. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, Pig sorry, Piglet said that there's a problem. Might be with their bottom lane, with the um, what's it called? Compatibility, communication, communication. I still don't think it's gonna be trumped by sneaky and eliminations communication. So it still should be destruction. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested to see how that will turn out. Overall, I think. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. A Liquid could, in theory, throw both games and be two and two. They but play I mean, it's Cloud Nine and TSM. Yeah. So, but I could see it going either way. So I think that we're gonna have some actually incredibly good matches this week, just overall. And I think I teams think that need. Yeah, I think EU should be a little bit more predictable. And I think that the other part of NA, I think the rest of it, I think we're gonna start to see other teams start to emerge and start to not emerge. So Dignitas might throw two games. I don't know. They also play Winter Fox apart from Gravity. It's gonna be a, a make it or break it kind of week for a few teams um, for the direction in which they're either gonna go up or down. So I'm really interested to see. Other than that, I, I can't, ooh, it's hard to make a prediction. We also have a lot of new, not new players, but players actually being in the rosters. There's way more subs over in NA. Um, yeah, there were, what, five? Oh God, more than that. Total subs? Oh God, there was like seven or eight, maybe nine. 
Or was a lot. It Ten. Was, it was Fifteen. Right. Seventy-four. I uh, just millions. Got it. Millions of subs. So um, I. It's hard to make predictions personally, but it's going to be a good week. I think it's going to be really fun matches to watch for sure. Yeah, I think it's really important that um, Winter Fox win this one. Yeah. yeah, it is against CSM. No easy task, but I think it's really important that they take this first game, keep going on their mm -hmm. high course. Uh, I think their next week is much easier. You taking a to toss? Pull it up right now. Or oh, the th week three? Yeah, but we're not in that. times. That's but funny. I think if they win this game, they're going to be sitting pretty. Yeah, they might be. Me. They might be. Yeah. Um, I think Coast uh, has the yeah, opportunity see, to win two games as well. This I week. see Nintas being zero and two. I don't care that they have one win. That was some. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be one and three. I can see it totally happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah. that's basically yeah. what I'm, I'm looking forward to. This NA is looking a whole lot better than EU. Um. I would I would sit in if you have Piglet you had him bench last season like or last week like you should have mm -hmm. put him in because him. there is no way the team's not gonna be focused around Piglet they are going to if Piglet sneezes two people are gonna have tissues for him if he needs a drink three people are gonna have water bottles hold. I mean he is going to be catered to that's what they got him for yeah um he is going to be the Korean double lift oh um, God I hope he's better than <laughs> <laughs> okay um how do I he is going to be what what CLG wanted Double Lift to be. Can he be America's Faker? America's Faker. I don't know about that yet. We'll see. If, when he, if he carries his team to four and zero, I will call him America's Faker. Okay, good. Sounds good. So, I yeah. look forward to that next week. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be next week's matches and our predictions, um, as rough as they are. But that's hard to predict. There's a lot of good, uh, a lot of good competition. It's an exciting year, actually. And we only have had two games to look at them yet. Yes. So far. Very I true. I love that there's ten teams now. I love that too. Very helpful. You don't have, you don't have one team playing like two games or two teams playing two games or well, three. Was it three? It was odd. Sometimes they played two games. Sometimes they played three. Yeah. So. Awkward. And then no super yeah. weeks, which is. Like, Super Weeks were interesting, but they were long, so... And they killed players. That's a lot of games to yeah. play. Yeah, it's a long time to hang out at... Yeah, at... Yeah, too yeah. much, so, so... 10 games every two days is going to be just fine. 20 games overall for all of us, and it's awesome. Yeah, 20, uh, 20 in four Yeah, days. if you guys have any better ideas, any kind of thing you want us to do, names... If there's something you want us to expand on uh, that we talked about, uh, any sections that you want us to add, or anything you think would make this better let us know in the comments below obviously if you could give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video that's also mildly appreciated mildly it's greatly i don't know where mildly even came from um <laughs> that's weird yeah, we appreciate it, uh, yeah. Take it, or leave it. Yeah. um also if you share it that's awesome actually sharing is better than anything else. some people say that sharing is caring it's lots of fun it can be fun but, uh, yeah, that's going to be our first LCS Weekly. Um, like I said, let us know how, what you guys thought. And until next time, uh, we'll see all you guys later. Bye.